everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Jen and this is Fundy Fridays and here on my channel we talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism, American conservative politics, pop culture, fundamentalist influencers, um, and gay stuff. And if you are new to my channel, maybe you just joined because of my appearance on the Shiny Happy People documentary, welcome. I hope you enjoy your stay. We have a good time here. Uh, we like to be educated. We like to share the experiences of others and we like to try our very best to take down the systems of patriarchy, fundamentalism, white supremacy, all that good stuff. Well, the stuff's not good, but it's good that we're trying to take it down. Yes, so today I am going to be talking a little bit about my experience with the documentary, but mostly I'm going to be telling you all the new stuff that we learned from it. Later this month, James is going to be putting out an episode all about the life and times and politics of Jim Holt. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Then later in the month, we're going to be talking about Bible Man. I'm going to be changing it up a little bit from the Duggars. Um, and then next month, I have a three episode special for you that I have been dying to share with you. So yeah, it's going to be really fun here on Fundy Friday. So just keep, just keep an eye out. As always, if you'd like to support me, I have Patreon, I have channel memberships, merch. If you don't want to give me any money, which is very fair, just a like, share, and subscribe will always um, mean the world to me. So yeah, let's dive in. Last week, Shiny Happy People came out um, and I have seen it four times now, uh, just through various circumstances. And I will say that I thought it was incredible. Um, I loved how Olivia Christ told the story and how um, she used all of the survivors footage in a way that helped really tell this compelling story and how we finally have this big picture of IBLP that really had never been done before. Um, we've had little snippets here and there, but this is a huge deal. I mean, IBLP responded and we'll see how that goes. But so I just want to say if there's something that you think that they left out, just know that it was for one of two reasons. Cut for time, in which case, please direct all complaints to Amazon because all of us would like a sequel. Um, I know that there was a shitload more footage that was left on the cutting room floor that um, could definitely be used for a sequel. And two, some things just don't make it past legal. So I think that Olivia did an amazing job and she left just the right amount of stuff in to let certain people incriminate themselves Um and to help the audience uh, come to their own conclusions because that's how a documentary works. You tell a story through other people. Otherwise, I adore this series. Um, can't say enough good things about it. I am so blessed and grateful that I got to participate in it. It is just a once in a lifetime opportunity to tell these people's stories and try and shine light on the horrors that IBLP and Bill Gothard inflicted on millions of people. Yeah, I just I just highly recommend that you watch it. And I also want to tell you that today's episode, I'm not really going to dive into any of the survivor stories because that's theirs to tell. Second reason for that is I really want to direct everyone to their social media profiles because a lot of them have books and podcasts and other opportunities that need attention and I really just want to funnel everybody to them. Yeah, they're just incredible. I just think that there needs to be a sequel. Another thing, um, like I said, this is not a biography of the Duggars. I have several other videos about that. Definitely check them out. Um, recently, my first original Duggar video, the one that the one with two million views, recently got unblocked from TLC. I wonder how long that will last. So it is available to watch, as well as the director's cut, which is like me watching the the old video and reacting to it and like I sang the loyalty song and it's a whole thing and then there's like all the other videos that detail Josh's trial and the verdict and um one of them if you go back and look one of the Duggar videos that I did I have the same hair as when I was in the documentary and I filmed that video the day after I got back from Atlanta. So lots of videos about the Duggars. Um, just like I'm not going to talk about the Dillards um, and their conservative views because I've talked about that before. This video is just about the stuff that happened in Shiny Happy People. I assume if you're watching this right now, you have seen all of those videos and you've seen Shiny Happy People 
and you are a fan of my work. So hopefully I can move forward without any fucking strife. Some responses to the documentary that I want to talk about. Um, obviously, the Duggars made a statement. Um, I recall correctly, it came out during the first one. Like the first episode had just aired and it was like 30 minutes later and they made a statement. So yeah, they said... The recent documentary, I love when people do that, like as if that's like, it's their way of being like, like bitchy about it. The recent documentary that talks about our family is sad because in it we see the media and those with ill intentions hurting people we love. Like other families, ours too has experienced the joys and heartbreaks of life just in a very public format. This documentary paid so much and so many in a derogatory and sensationalized way because sadly that's the direction of entertainment these days. I mean, of all the people featured, Bill Gothard definitely deserves to have derogatory things said about him. Uh, and he is a horrible monster person. And Jim Bob, you better not be fucking barking up that tree because you are just as evil as Bill Gothard. Uh, so I really don't, it's hurting people we love. Motherfucker, you hurt many people that you loved, probably a dozen or so members of your own family. So I don't want to fucking hear that. We have always believed that the best chance to repair damaged relationships or to reconcile differences is through love in a private setting. Yeah, they talk about that in the documentary. We like to take care of our family in private. Well, it didn't work out for you now, fucking did it. We love every member of our family and we'll continue to do all we can to have a good relationship with each one. Is that why you've blacklisted your own daughter? Through both the triumphs and the trials, we have clung to our faith all the more and discovered that through the love and grace of Jesus, we find strength, comfort, and purpose. Well, I'm sure glad that you have Jesus because you don't fucking have anybody else now. <laughs> and then IBLP, uh, their message is a lot longer, but it's still stupid. They start off with the, the most recent documentary about IBLP is a reflection of today's culture. It's misleading and untruthful commentary mocks that which is good and moral in the most sensationalized way way possible both for shock value and profit i'm sorry that iblp made profit off of doing shocking things to people you ever you ever consider that media story makers are anything but fair and balanced you literally made a wisdom booklet about slut shaming your own followers and by that i mean literal children they produce attractively packaged content i mean to push an agenda increase viewership and pursue revenue and what does IBLP do? We do not want to minimize perspectives that individual people have experienced or expressed, but the creators of these types of documentaries have a different agenda than perhaps even those interviewed by them. No, probably the only people that were mad about how they were portrayed was Paul and Morgan. Everybody else was very satisfied. One-sided and manipulative journalistic tactics offer no alternative perspectives for the viewers, and many good people are manipulated and used while others are maligned and attacked. Okay, so it's not a documentary about the difference between fundamentalism and non-denominational Christianity as much as Paul and Morgan want it to be. That's not what this is, and that's not how the story was being told. Make your own shitty documentary and, and, and put your own people in it, and, and then we'll see. IBLP is neither a church nor a religion, but rather a non-denominational Christian ministry. We know. That desires to introduce individuals to the gospel of blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, shut up. While selected sound bites of the seminar teaching may be found on the internet, anyone who wants to know the full context of the teaching can view the basic seminar free of charge at basicseminar.com. Yeah, I don't think we need to do that. Several million people from around the world and many different walks of life, churches, denominations, nationalities, and personal Christian experiences have been positively impacted by our ministry. That's called confirmation bias. The founder, Bill Gothard, resigned. He was kicked out. In 2014, is no longer associated with the IBLP ministry. Um, yeah, that's why you're selling wisdom booklets as a Bible study still. Um, and you still have all the same authority bullshit and everything that you've taught before. Sadly, we live in a day where this gospel is not accepted readily, but is even vehemently rejected. We affirm the Bible as our final authority, and sadly, this life-changing book is also rejected by the world. Our desire is that the person of Jesus Christ would be lifted up and that these men would be drawn to him, as Jesus stated in John 12, 32. Then maybe, like stop assaulting people at your headquarters and covering it up and suing them for speaking up. Maybe if you could handle that, we can move on to some other stuff. Cause right now your ministry is just, you know, a high control group and all these people are left in the path of this 
storm that you caused. So Jed Duggar, he was liking negative comments on Jill's Instagram because Jill is putting out a book next year um, called Counting the Cost. And it's more probably going to be more detailed version of the things that we heard in um, Shiny Happy People. I think maybe maybe a little bit here that the Duggar boys don't know about Instagram features because they weren't allowed to have Instagram. They just had a flip phone. Maybe he just didn't know that people could see that he was liking these things. I mean, either way, he needs to get a Finsta is what I'm saying. So people tagged him and they're like, Jed, how dare you be liking these negative comments? And he said, excuse you, but you don't know our family at all. Please don't make assumptions about things that 100% are none of your business. The true shame is on you. Yeah, we don't know your family and we shouldn't make assumptions, but... You don't seem like you're a very good brother if you're liking negative comments about your sister on her post. Okay, dick. Like, what do you want? And then another thing that happened literally yesterday, a bunch of people have been doing stuff. Corey Shepard, one of the producers, who I am obsessed with her. I love her. She did an AMA uh, yesterday on our Duggar Snark and answered quite a few questions about things that have been left out, what, you know, were the criteria or, you know, favorite moments, all that, all the stuff you'd want from an AMA. She said James was, was a hidden hero, which I really appreciated, but obviously, you know, Paul and Morgan were not um, happy with how they were portrayed. Um, I don't really want to get into it. Um, watch Jordan and McKay's video about it because they reacted to their entire, they reacted to Paul and Morgan's reaction in a video and I'm not going to, so watch theirs. I have now gone down in history being linked to Paul and Morgan in this way because it was my clips that like were interspersed with theirs Um, and it's just funny because I, I mean, they didn't tell me that they were going to do that. I didn't even know Paul and Morgan were in this. I didn't know any of the Duggars were in this thing. They wouldn't tell me. I don't know. It's just really weird because I never thought I would be to this, this like place in my life where like I am like a public figure. Never in a million years did I think that would happen, let alone be a part of the fucking documentary that takes down IBLP. Let I mean, like, my face and appearance in this thing has been used in other people's drama clickbait videos. I mean, I can't stop that. I just think it's just really strange. And in a way, it's like, I don't think I'm a bad person, but I can see how, like, my detractors would think that's like a taste of my own medicine, right? Just like I'm not mad at all that Paul and Morgan like used me for clickbait on their like on a couple videos, um, because I mean I technically started it like I made a video about them. So what was I expecting to happen? It's just it's just surreal. Like it 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 really just hit me recently how how much responsibility I have now and what I want my role to be in this discourse. To that I say. Obviously, Paul and Morgan, I don't agree with what they're doing or saying. And it does hurt my feelings when they say um, awful things about the producers of this thing because I know them personally. And it does hurt my feelings when they say stuff about me. But, like, I can take it. I mean, I dished it out. So that's what I'm going to say about that. There was quite a bit in this that I didn't know about IBLP. I I did not grow up in this world. Um, I'm just an outsider trying to learn as much as I can so I can have these conversations with you. Uh, Some things that were covered in this that I did not realize or did not understand the extent of just how big it was um, is the physical abuse. Um, They show footage of a small child being used to demonstrate to a crowd how to spank. I knew there was sexual abuse, but not to this extent. The educational neglect, the Joshua generation, zero idea about what that was. So I was very glad to be educated. Um, Obviously child labor, but I didn't know it was, I didn't know they had kids ripping up carpet and like building basically entire like convention centers off of child labor. Financial abuse, I knew about that. Parentification, I didn't know how bad the Gothard stuff was. Um, I had an idea, but this was the first time that I had heard such graphic detail. I knew they had a prison ministry. I did not realize how how bad it was. Um, And in the documentary, they show clips of um, 
formerly incarcerated people talking about uh, the character programs that they did through IBLP. Um, I didn't know it was used in the military or police training either. That's fucking crazy. Chad was right. World domination was the goal. I didn't know that they had a solitary confinement situation there. Uh, that's horrifying. Um, if you watch the documentary, they talked to some people who went through that. I also didn't know how rich Bill Gothard was. Um, IBLP is worth 90 million. I also didn't know that they had character curriculums in public schools. Um, and I, you can still buy these, these character first curriculums, uh, online. I just recently found one. Documentary opens up. We have Jill talking about how she wants to tell her own story instead of it being from a tabloid. I know we are all really appreciative of her being in this documentary because we need, we need a real full-blooded Duggar, especially one who went through what she did and has the bravery to speak up. Um, Derek was actually being a really good supportive husband. I appreciated him, um, especially when he would tell her, like, only say what you're comfortable with. And, you know, when he would squeeze her hand when she was having a hard time. I was told that there was more than 10 hours of footage with Jill. So please beg Amazon for a second season. Um, she does make a strange comment about public schools brainwashing kids. Um, which I was thought was really interesting. Um, and then somebody asked about that on the AMA with Corey, and she said that it was a much longer quote. The full line is, which is true that those things can happen, but then Derek says, but you teach your children to think for themselves too. Dill said, yeah, but you have to also, it comes to a point where, and this is, I think, the biggest thing, trust in God, which is God leading you to do. Yes, you don't throw your kids out to the wolves and you use some sort of discernment. And I feel a lot of these parents feel like they really are, but I think that also independence is a good thing and you need to encourage that in your kids. I think they should have left the whole clip in because that gives a lot more context, but um, very interesting. That's actually quite the take from Jill. They talk about the Megyn Kelly interview and how she wished that she had never done it, but she was under duress. Also in this episode, Jim Holt reveals that he um, started dating Bobby when she was 14 and he was 19. Um, and I'm glad they left that in. Uh, and also they give a date, a date and time for when they found out about Josh's original crimes that he started when he was 12. Um, when you deal with those kinds of things in house, they don't get taken care of. They talked at length about the um, Gothard rehab facility that Josh was sent to um, to build houses as a punishment. Um, they indicate that they thought that wasn't enough, but you kind of acted like Josh was healed after his little program because you continued to associate with the Duggars after that. You know, Jill talks about how she wished that nobody had ever known about this. And, you know, it's, it is just very complicated. You have to be nuanced about it because it is her horrific trauma. And I, you know, certainly if I went through something like that, wouldn't want people online speculating about how, when, where, why these things happened. And that's exactly what happened when the police report was released. People were trying to use context clues to figure out who was being talked about in the police report, all these things. And that's horribly painful for her. So she doesn't want to talk about it. We also learn that the technology ban was so strict in the Duggars house that they didn't even have a weather radio. Um, apparently Amy's mom would have to call up to the house and give them tornado warnings because they couldn't hear them on the radio. Amy also talks about Jim Bob being her father figure and how it was so painful when all this stuff went down because she saw her hero fall. We also learned that Jim Bob got his first taste of politics at an anti-abortion rally in 1997. When Josh was a young boy running around the Capitol, he formed a club called Boys Christian Outreach Team or Boycott and that was the inspiration for them boycotting the gas station in their town that I don't know the full story. Jill, even Jill said she can't remember if it was alcohol or porn. One of those things, it was really stupid that they were doing in any way. And it was mostly just, you know, a virtue signaling. In 2002, Jim Bob ran for U.S. Senate and the photo of him taking the kids to the Capitol um, went viral for the 2000s. Um, and it inspired, which is what led to the TLC specials. Holt then reveals that Josh and Kaylee were basically arranged to marry. He didn't say that. Those are my words, but that's how it is in IBLP. He complains that Jim Bob lied to him and said that he wasn't going to reveal Josh's 
crimes to him and that he was going to wait until after Kaylee and Josh were married to to tell her. And he says, well, did you dangle my daughter in front of your son like a carrot to get him to behave? And Jim Bob said, yes. Um, let's see. Yes, it says March 30th, 2003 was when Holtz said he found out. Um, and I did some math and that Josh was 15 in 2003. So this was a full three year cover up from the Duggars, um, as to the original crimes. Jim Holt also said that he referred to what Josh did to his sisters as molestation. And she snapped at him and said, never say that again. That was a very important clip because it showed that they knew it was wrong. The Duggars knew that that what Josh did was wrong and that they were trying to change the narrative. How much clearer can it be by them saying, don't call it that. And we know exactly how they changed the story for Megyn Kelly. In trying to create a persona that he was a good dad and that he really took care of this problem, Jim Bob orchestrated a drive up to uh, talk to the state trooper, who we now know is also a criminal pedophile. And Jim Holt was in the car with Josh and, and Jim Bob when this happened. Um, and I just get the feeling that Jim Bob did this to, to try to impress Jim Holt. But he says it was a setup. Jim Bob knew this guy and he just gave, he just gave Josh a talking to. He said, if you do this again, I'm really going to bring the hammer down. And you know how that worked out. Um, as we all know, eventually a police report was filed, but that was not until after Oprah, uh, sent her information to the, uh, local authorities. So episode two, Jill talks about how she felt the burden to fix the situation, that's why she went on Megyn Kelly. I'm sure she was also taken aside and coached and given the right opinion to have by her father. I also forgot how much of an ass Megyn Kelly is. Like, did you hear her say, did you fight? Okay, fucking victim shamer. But yeah, it was just crazy seeing that, that, that again, after all this time, Jill and Jessa were thrown under the bus. Um, no idea about how Jessa feels about all this. No, I'm not going to even speculate. Um, but that was just extremely fucking hard for Jill. And you could tell that she's actively like going through a trauma response as she's talking about this. And yeah, just imagine having to go on national television to defend your abuser while you're still not even done processing it. And also like she didn't want anybody to find out about it. And now all this attention's on her and she has to like say the right thing to save the show to save her family and she's being asked to forgive her abuser and I also they show a clip of Jim Bob and Michelle talking about their trials of Josh and I had no idea that they talked about that also didn't know that Bill Gothard saying that the one who popularized pornography in America is worse than a hundred Hitlers buddy I wouldn't even say that about you and you're a horrible fucking monster man Amy talked about uh, the Duggars having a Disney book burning. Well, a book burning of everything secular. Um, I just bring up the Disney thing because they went to Disney World for an episode um, and they didn't know any of the characters. Obviously, parentification, um, the spanking and child abuse stuff gets talked a lot about. Michael Pearl. There was a clip of Michael Pearl that I'd never seen, like a sit down interview with Anderson Cooper. I'd never seen that one before. In my notes here, I said, with the interweaving of survivor stories, it really drives home how purity culture and high control groups lead, lead directly to assault. When you have to forsake bodily autonomy and are groomed to submit and normalize abuse, creates a environment of assault. Then Jill reveals that she only signed on for more episodes because she felt pressure from the family. She even brings up the uh, umbrella of authority and obedience to her parents being one of the big reasons. I mean, in this episode, we get much more detail on the shady ways that Jim Bob tricked Jill into signing this contract. Basically, right before her wedding, um, Jim Bob had Jill and the rest of the kids sign this nebulous contract that basically signed away filming rights of their life, whatever TLC wanted, um, for the next five years. And she said that Jim Bob didn't tell her what it was and it was just on the kitchen table and she was running through really quickly and he's like, hey, sign this. You know, and I'm sure being in that family and being on TV, they were used to signing stuff and she has full respect and trust in her father. So why would he ever have her sign anything she didn't want to, right? Um, and she goes on to say that she didn't know what she was signing and that she regrets it and would not have signed it. And this comes back up when she tries to get out of the contract. She did not want to film her own labor. And in fact, she didn't want to film it at all. And TLC 
said, well, you have to. So either you film it yourself vlog style or we're bringing the whole camera crew in. Um, so they filmed it vlog style. And she said, well, can I get some money then? And they said, well, we, well, we already paid your father. And Derek said, well, that means we don't get anything. Um, and it seems like they were already kind of on the outs with Jim Bob. Jill mentions that for seven years of her adult life, she was never paid. And I think that she should be paid for her minor years as well. Um, some other fucked up stuff about the contracts was there were several adults still being listed as minors, which is, I don't know if that's illegal, but it should be. They also had sections in the contract that said that any future children born of the people in the contracts were automatically lumped in. All right. And then Jill and Derek talk about their mission trip, which in my opinion, they should never have been there in the first place, but TLC were being dicks about this. So, and it was really confusing for her because they, they had been filming Jill and Derek in Central America, but then they they wanted them to come back to Arkansas for like a photo shoot or something. And they said, well, we can't just leave. We have to be here for 10 months. And then that's when she was made aware of the contract that she had signed five years ago. Um, and it started to scare her like, oh God, no, I actually have obligations. I can't just tell TLC to fuck off. Like I signed a contract. So Derek finally decides to say something and he talks to Jim Bob and demands compensation. And they go back and forth. Like how much do you want? What's it worth? You know, they, they talked about that quite a bit. Um, and eventually Jim Bob just said, well, I'll give you $10 an hour. And for extra context, the minimum wage in Arkansas is $11 an hour. So imagine how fucking insulting that is. And at that point, Derek tried to reach out to TLC. So, and what ended up happening was they weren't able to get a hold of TLC. Jim Bob's um, PR guy, Chad Gallagher, uh, who Derek make sure we know who that is um in the episode can't you can't talk to them you need to talk to me because jim bob's contract is is through me so basically they got no money and they didn't get to talk to any tlc heads jill said that jim bob said thanks to derek i'm going to pay some people and i don't know how that was said to her but i'm reading it as sarcastic like jim bob being like thanks derek now i have to pay people because the press is mad at me and he said, well, I'll pay you if you sign another contract. So, of course, they didn't want to be involved in more contractual hell. So they turned it down. But apparently, if you had signed this contract, you got a lump sum that Derek said was equal to about what it would be to pay for the kids up to 18 in minimum wage. Then Derek says that that's the reason why they were fired from TLC. I'm remembering around this time the Jazz Jennings comments, but I don't know if that just happened to be coincidence but it seemed like they were done with tlc anyway might have been a mutual breakup then derek says he received a strange and threatening text from a burner phone um and he reported it to the police um and if you're interested somebody on reddit has like unblurred the text messages so you can see the full thing but they're really bad and disgusting they're talking about jim bob gave you an untouched virgin and this is how you repay him i don't know who sent that because it could be any random disgruntled fundy because you know how vitriolic they get then the producers ask was that jim bob who sent the text and both of them say no up to you to discern who you think that could have been i don't think it was jim bob episode four is uh one of the heavier ones actually they're all heavy but i'd say the first episode's okay the rest of them definitely have your uh, therapist on speed dial if you're gonna watch them uh so episode four is mostly about josh's trial for his other crimes um and i guess i had the uh the the uh, honor of being the one that gets to talk about the trial and uh, covenant eyes and yeah a little bit of uh what the judge said to jim bob and that's fine i like i like that i'm able to do that because it would have been horrific having the survivors tell that story um so i'm glad i got to do it this documentary also contains snippets of the body cam, like the police body cam audio uh, from Josh's arrest. And I'm sure they got it through FOIA, but I had never seen those before. Um, and I had never, oh God, it's bad. Oh, it just transports you back. Um, and I also forgot that this was in 2019. And if I'm not mistaken, in my original Duggars video, I'm like, oh, Homeland Security was there. I really hope it wasn't anything bad. Um, the Holt said that Homeland Security talked to them 
right after Josh was questioned. And then when the Homeland Security raid happened, Jim, Bob, and Michelle put out a statement that was like, as far as we're, as far as we know, there's, there's no investigations against our family. I don't. There's no investigations. Um, and the Holt said that they absolutely knew that there was an investigation. Um, they tell you when something that big is happening to you. And then Derek texted Josh, apparently, and he denied any wrongdoing. Um, and uh, this also where Amy said that this is the last time that they really spoke to the Duggars was 2019. I forgot. Yeah, Jim Bob ran for office around this time. Dumb bitch. <laughs> Yeah, Jill basically has no contact with the family. I don't know who started that. We know that Jim Bob told Jill that she can't come to the big house without express permission from him. And at that point, I'd be like, okay, then I'm not coming over. That was it. There wasn't a lot of new information if you, you know, have been following this family for billions of years like I have. Um, just the uh, Jim Holt revealing when he knew and how long he knew and his age gap with his wife... Um, the contractual bullshit that Jim Bob pulled on Jill, um, the fact that the family knew what the investigation was about in 2019 and still chose to do the stupid things that they did, um, and that there several of the family members are no contact. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all the new the new stuff, and this is just more detailed. Um, but yeah, um. Shiny Happy People, in my humble and definitely biased opinion, is the most comprehensive and direct takedown of the Duggar Empire, the IBLP machine that promoted them, and the entire assembly line of abuse that has formed around it all. I personally think there is something in this series for even the most hardened fundy snarker, and I say that as somebody who makes a living from it, and as somebody who learned new things from this documentary every time I watched it. Four times now. And I really think the thing that sets shiny happy people apart from every other religious or high control group documentary is just how much Olivia, Corey, and their whole team made absolutely sure to put IBLP survivors at the center of this entire project. The beating heart of the Fundy Snark community has been, and always should be, meant to expose the abuses of Christian fundamentalism. And that story is just simply incomplete if it does not include the stories of those who survived. And here they are, not just included, but leading the movement. I'm gonna cry. I'm so proud of all of them. If you are somebody like me, who came to this world as an outsider, then these are the stories that you need to hear. This organization did real life damage and fucked with these people's lives. And they're finally getting to talk about it. Having an opportunity to speak to all of the survivors of this documentary, I can't say enough good things about their courage, their fortitude, and their humility. Every single one of them saw this as an opportunity to challenge the systems that terrorize them, and they pounced on it. They're warriors, each and every one of them, and it is my belief that everyone could benefit from hearing what they have to say. There is so much more going on in this story than just the Duggars. And Shiny Happy People is the most thorough telling of that story I have ever heard. The stories of the survivors are going to save lives, and they take their their trauma and they have turned it into something beautiful that is helping others and I'm just so proud of them the amount of shit that they've taken from their family their friends their old churches the internet all for telling their truth and speaking about these horrific injustices that they should never have had to go through it's just fucking beautiful man I'm so I'm so happy to have been asked to be a part of this project. These people are amazing. I talk to them every day. They're incredible people. Thank you so much to everybody who gave me the opportunity to be a part of this project and to all of my fans and my friends and everybody who supported me throughout the years. And I'm just, this is a big fucking deal. All right, y'all, my camera died and I didn't really think it was necessary to get out a brand new battery just, just to film the outro. Um, obviously, I got very emotional there. Yeah, I don't need to get into this again. You already heard me cry. Um, thank you to everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I just am overwhelmed with love. 
my cup overfloweth, as they say. Uh, um, remember to consensually smash that like and subscribe button. Also follow James. He does cool shit every now and then. Um, check out uh, the AMA that Corey did. Um, be on the lookout for, you know, some more appearances from me on various things. Uh, buy the merch. Subscribe to me on Patreon. Become a channel member. Instagram army. I just made that one up. Just, you know, I'm on I'm on all the social medias if you want more of me. I love you so much. I would not have this life without you guys. I would still be working at Crumble. Watch Shiny Happy People. It's on Amazon Prime. Um, and it's really good shit. I will say, like, it's, it's very graphic and there's a lot of bad stuff that happens. So, you know, don't think it's like some fun tabloid romp about the Duggars because it's not. It's about horrible abuse and how amazing the survivors are. So, um, I will talk to you guys later and peace out.